going on guys? Today, I'm gonna to be building a loft in my garage. All right guys, so in case you missed my last video, I am building a loft and a half pipe in my garage. And I was able to get all of the wood ordered and got it delivered here a couple days ago. So it was extremely helpful doing all the planning and design up front so I knew exactly how much wood I needed. And that even allowed me to estimate and figure out exactly what screws and how many I would need. So I could order everything and got it delivered right to my house. And here I've got the wood separated into two separate piles. So this pile is for the loft and that pile over there is for the half pipe. So I'm gonna be focusing on getting the loft done first. So I'll quickly go through what I have. So I have three six by six posts here. Those will be the posts that support the uh, free hanging side of the loft. And then next to that, I've got the two by 10 by 12 footers, and that's what's gonna create the floor structure of the loft. And lastly, underneath, I have some three quarter inch OSB subfloor, and that is tongue and groove. As you can see, I got the area cleared out here for the half pipe and the loft. So this is the section we'll be working on today. First up, I'm going to attach the joist plate to this wall. So in order to do that, I need to figure out and mark where all my studs are. I know that they are two by six studs and they're 24 inches on center. I have a stud finder and I have also a lot of good pictures of when we built the place. I'll be using two of the two by tens across this span. It's about 19 feet from that wall over to about here. And I am gonna have to cut out one of them to go up over the doorway, like you probably saw in my design. All right, I've now got my first joist plate tacked up with just some normal screws, but what I'm really gonna be using is these 3 8 inch by four inch lags. These are gonna be much stronger than just the regular wood screws. So for these, I do have to drill a pilot hole that I believe is 15 64ths, and then I can go ahead and drive these in, and I'm gonna be using washers too. So I'll put a few of these in the first joist plate, and then I'll get the second one tacked up, and then go through and install these lags on every stud. Of course, completely by chance, the end of my 2x10 is exactly where a stud is, where I want to secure to. So I'm going to now try to cut this as it sits up here on the wall with the circular saw. Thank you. 
All right, I've now got my joist plate completely secured. And I'll be honest, this is probably overkill with how many lags I put in this. Basically every two feet, there's three. Uh, but you know, I want this to be really strong and you might be landing up there with a bike and I'm gonna put a lot of shelving up there and store a lot of parts. So better be safe than sorry. I am missing a few, you can see I need to go probably order some more lags. Just need three more to finish it off. But I got the cutout there, that lines up pretty nicely. I did end up counterboring these last three here because I know that a joist is gonna be coming in right around that area. So I need to have those counterboard so that my joist can sit flush onto the joist plate. Now next up, I can start dealing with the six by six posts and I'm gonna be using these post bases and these are pretty nice because you just slip the uh, post right on top of there and these get secured to the floor. It's gonna be a single 3 8 lag that is uh, made for concrete. So I'm gonna have to drill the concrete first and then put a single lag right there in the middle. So I'll just need to measure out and make sure these are all in the right spot. But then I can secure those to the floor and then I will work on the posts. I am gonna be notching out the posts at the top and I think overall they need to get a little bit shorter as well. And then once I get those done, I can start working on the joist plate for this side, which is gonna sit on top of the posts. Okay, I now have all my posts set and my joist plates on. So now I'm gonna work on this first floor joist here and that should square everything up. And then from there, I can just start working my way down. I think I'm gonna stick with 14 inches on center. I'll try to see how it looks and then go from there. I know the first few I'm gonna have pretty tightly spaced because that's where I really wanna make sure it's strong and I'm dealing with this cutout. So I'm gonna have those pretty close and then from there maybe I can go to like 16 inches on center the whole way down. This is definitely gonna take some time doing it by myself, but I'm gonna use joist hangers. Maybe I'll try to use those to my advantage, put those up first and that'll kind of give me an extra hand to place it up there and then screw it on the other side.
Now I've got all of the floor joists in. Uh, that took some time, but it went pretty smoothly. It really wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be doing it by myself. Uh, so I did end up doing 14 inches on center for all of the joists. And so far I have the joist hangers on the wall side here. And now I'm gonna go back and actually add the joist hangers on this side as well. That will just add some more strength so you're not depending on just the screws that are coming in from the outside, which right now I just did three in each uh, joist. So I can go back and put the joist hangers in. That will distribute the load onto more screws, making it stronger. And then I'm also going to be doubling up this uh, joist plate on this side. As you can see, I have the posts cut to allow for that. So I'll be adding another layer of plate to the outside with these, and I think I'll be gluing it and screwing it to the original. That should make it super strong and eliminate any possibility of flex in that plate. And then once I get that done, I'll be ready to start laying down the uh, OSB subfloor, which I have right here. And it should be pretty straightforward because it is exactly 12 feet wide. So I won't have to do that much cutting. I think I'll only have to cut down two sheets when I get towards the back wall. All right guys, the loft is complete. I got this, uh, the second layer of header on here. That came out really nice. Got them glued together and screwed together. I also added all of these joist hangers now on this side as well. So I've got those on both sides. I also had to add some support where the pieces of plywood came together. This would be on the non tongue and groove sides. So unfortunately these came together right off of the stud. So to fully support that, I put some of these bridges in, I think like every two feet, and that really made it feel solid up there. I had to do that in two spots. Also over here, you can see the split was right between those two joists. So I got all those supports put in. 
I also did do some full solid bridging here. I'd like to eventually do the whole thing, but I did run out of two by tens. The first few are kind of the most important in my setup anyway, because I do have these two, which are a little weaker because I angled them up. And once I have the half pipe here, you might be going up and doing like a stall right on this first one. So it's nice to have those bridges in there. It kind of distributes the load when you hit that really hard uh, across a few other beams. And these angled sections came out pretty much as I expected. I am pretty confident in how strong this is. I've got so many lags in this header here. There's actually one right there that's tying this into the two by sixes behind the wall. So, so I'm not too concerned with how strong that is. And over here at this door, I had to do something kind of funny. I was aware that I was gonna have to do something like this when I designed it, even though this may look like an afterthought. I was well aware and I placed the ceiling height where it is on purpose. So I had to make these cutouts so that when you open the door, it clears every two by 10. This last one got way closer than I thought it was going to. I don't really know why that happened, but it clears and doesn't touch. And you can open the door the whole way with no issues. So this probably wasn't the perfectly correct way to do it, but I've got so many floor joists through here that they're 14 on center and this last couple are actually closer just the way it worked out. So I'm not concerned about the strength of this at all. Up here on top, the uh, plywood went down really smoothly. I started here on this end with this back one. And then I went out to this one, made sure it was pounded in nice and tight with the, uh, the tongue and groove. Then did this outer one. And then the same exact thing on the next row. And then the last row was the ones that I had to cut. Uh, so I'm going against the structure of my building here. So I did cut this one a little extra just so that there wasn't a big gaping hole there. I did already go ahead and move one of my lights. So you can see where the other two are. This, this one was here hanging down pretty far. So I just moved it so it's more centered in the loft area. And I also pulled it up tight so that you won't be hitting your head on it. I might add more lighting up here, but having just that one is honestly pretty good. It kind of depends on what exactly I want to do up here. If it's just going to be storage or if I want it to be more of a hangout area, maybe I'll do something else with lighting. I know I'll have to move a couple of these other lights once I build the ramp. So you're not airing out of the half pipe and hitting your head on a light. But yeah, this thing is super solid. There's no flex or shake or anything. When you're up here, you can jump up and down and you feel nothing. It's awesome. So I'm really happy with how the structure came out. And the floor, I do think I'm gonna be painting this floor because it is just OSB sheathing. It can kind of break up if you don't paint it. So I'm gonna put a couple layers of paint to hold it together and it'll make it look a little nicer. And also I will be putting some type of a railing here. I wasn't in any rush to do it yet because I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do, but I'll probably have a pretty simple railing on this edge. I won't be putting anything on the front because that's where you'll be coming out from the half pipe and potentially landing up here or dropping in off of here into the half pipe. And then also once the half pipe is done, I'll probably be putting some regular stairs down right here on this corner. So it'll be running next to the half pipe kind of like I showed in my design. And I think I'll be building some type of shelving back here along this wall and maybe along that wall as well. All right, so that's gonna be it for today, guys. Hopefully this helps you if you wanna build something like this in your garage. I'm by no means a professional, but I tried to do my homework to make sure this was super strong and safe. Like I said, there's a few more details I can finish up, but now I'm ready to start on the half pipe.